everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the new DC Comics Multiverse 6 inch scale Justice Buster figure. Now, the six figures that you need to get in order to complete all the pieces for this Justice Buster are the Greg Capullo Joker figure the TV series Green Arrow and the TV series Flash figures. These three have been out for a few months now. And then the TV series Reverse Flash, the Earth-23 Superman, and the Zero Year Batman. And these figures are just now starting to hit shelves. Okay, so once you have all the pieces assembled, this thing is pretty easy to put together. Now you have the two legs, the two arms, you have the torso piece, and this actually comes in two different pieces, the bottom piece and the upper piece. I've already snapped them together, and once you get it snapped in, it's very hard to get it, uh, to take it back apart, so, but these are two different pieces. Comes with the same figure. And then you've got the shoulder piece, which is just kind of a rubber material, as well as these little spiky things are just rubber material and then you've got the head and again these uh, things on the head are just that kind of rubber material as well so essentially all you want to do is uh, you can just snap the head onto this shoulder piece and it just snaps on with a ball joint then take the legs you would snap the this lower piece into this upper piece on the torso and then you can just pop the legs in now you want to make sure that these shielding pieces are facing forward on the figure and they just snap right into place. And then once you have that, you can um, snap in the arms. And you want to make sure the thumbs are facing forward. And then you just snap on the, put on this uh, shoulder piece over the top and it should snap into place. Okay, so here's a look at the Justice Buster completely assembled. Now one thing I do want to note when you're putting it together, you may actually want to put the head on very last. This shoulder piece, this rubber shoulder piece can be kind of hard to actually snap into the torso so it's secure. So you really have to kind of push down and push hard. So it's probably best to do the head last. Um, once you do get it to snap in, it, it does stay nice and secure, but, but it can be a little difficult to do that. Overall, this actually turned out a lot cooler than I thought it was going to be when I first initially saw it. Paint applications are pretty basic. You've got some darker grays and then basically you've just got this lighter uh, gray. You've got nicks and, and little divots and everything sculpted throughout the armor, which I think is pretty cool. The only thing I don't really like is I don't like these rubber pieces that they used. Um, they have a tendency to bend. You can see these little spike things are kind of bent. And same with the one on his helmet. You know, they it kind of has a tendency to get bent. You can probably take a hair dryer and straighten these out if you want, but it would have been nice maybe if they'd used a little bit harder plastic. I guess the upside is that they won't break. You know, I could see if these were harder plastic, they might snap off easier. He's also got some black marks painted on the top of his head. The blue in the eyes, you've got the bat symbol on his chest sculpted. So if you're not aware, a Justice Buster is a suit of armor that Batman builds in order to be able to take out all the other members of the Justice League and he spends like ungodly amounts of money to have this thing built and basically he's come up with ways to defeat each member of the Justice League. Flash, Green Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Superman and, and Cyborg. This section here it's done with a black plastic and again not a lot of paint detail on this thing um, not much in the way of any kind of shading or anything you do have some darker gray down here at the feet and stuff but I do like the sculpting I like all the divots and, and line work and everything I did I think they did a nice job with the sculpting on the figure and looks pretty true to what we see in the comic book. So this figure stands, if you count to the very tip of the wings on his helmet, he stands about ten and a half, just a little bit over ten and a half inches tall. If you just count to the top of his head itself, then it's a little bit under nine inches, maybe eight and three quarter inches tall. In comparison with uh, Marvel Legends Hulkbuster Build-A-Figure, and the DC Collectibles Thrasher Suit Batman. And you can see all three of these figures are pretty close to the same height with one another. Here's a comparison with one of Mattel's Multiverse 6-inch Dawn of Justice Armored Batman figures and then an older Mattel 6-inch Superman figure. Here's a comparison with the DC Collectibles 6 inch Icons Green Lantern figure. Finally, here's a comparison with the 7 inch DC Collectibles New 52 Justice League figures with the Justice Buster. So articulation on this thing is not too bad. 
head is on a ball joint so he can look left and he can look right and he's got a little bit of up and down movement and you can kind of pivot to the head to the left and right as well arms are attached with standard ball hinge joints now with these uh, with this big shoulder pad thing you can only get the arm out about that much and you can't really rotate the arm all the way around you can do it forward and back but you can't really do it all the, all the way over his head he's got a single hinged elbow so he can bend his arm about that much and he's also got a swivel there at the elbow no wrist articulation he does have an ab type crunch joint um, but he can't really crunch down a whole lot that's about as much as he can crunch and he can look back more he does not have a waist swivel legs are attached with ball hinge joints so he can do the splits about that much he can get his leg forward about that much and he can do his leg back about that much does um, does have a thigh swivel Single hinge knee, so he can bend his knee about that much. No swivel at the knee, and then no ankle articulation. Okay, so that's my view. Overall, I like this figure, much more so than when I first saw it at the conventions. I think the size is good. I like the sculpting overall on it. I like the little nicks and everything. The paint applications are pretty basic, but honestly, if you look at it in the comics, that's what it pretty much looks like in the comics. It doesn't have really a whole lot of detail. So I think they've done a nice job with this figure. So. The entire wave uh, with the Collect and Connect pieces is out on shelves now. We'll have a full gallery of images up at toynewseye.com. There's a link in the description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you haven't already, please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll have links to those pages in the video description as well. And until next time, I'll catch you later.